dollars an hour. Um, I'm interested in raising that to eleven dollars per hour. I, I kind of surveyed around the area, asked around what other uh, companies are providing hourly wages, just for reference. Um, the city of Plymouth, uh, they do twelve dollars an hour. The Indiana average, according to LinkedIn, is twelve. Uh, the average for YMCA Indiana is eleven thirty-five. Uh, the LifePlex is $15 an hour and the Aquatic Center is 10. So I stuck us in at around 11 uh, for an hourly wage. And I, one thing to keep in mind also, these are pools and we are lake front, front property, which is an entirely different ballpark. Um, and usually they actually get paid more for being uh, certified for beachfront. So mm. We usually do pretty well with our staff. We have returners, so I thought 11 is pretty comfortable um, after also having conversations with some of our staff as well. Um, also, um, interested in increasing the concessions hourly wage currently sits at $8 an hour. Um, we're interested, I'm interested in raising that to nine per hour. Um, Let's and, go back to life. For yeah. A minute. Yes. Uh, you had a, how many returning this year? Everybody from last year or oh, almost everybody? Um, so this year we had a 50% return rate. Okay. Um, after doing end of season surveying with our lifeguards, it, it usually sits around 60, 65% return rate. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We do we do pretty well, but you know, especially in terms of lifeguards, those are people you really want to retain and you know, you can get certified at the age of 15, but we don't want our age group to be 15 for right. lifeguards. I mean, it's a pretty big responsibility. We want those kids returning to be 16, 17, 18 closing students, because uh, okay. when they get to that age, they can handle that job a little bit better, just maturity wise. Thank you. How many are we talking about? Uh, we have 12 to 14 lifeguards each year. I'm sorry, 12? 12. 12 to 14. So Amber, is that, 50% increase from what was budgeted this year to what you're proposing for next year, all related to hourly increases? Yes, but- okay. So there's no additional position in there? Um, there's one additional position in there, and I was gonna get to that after our concessions. Okay. That's fine, go ahead. Uh, um, so the additional position is also an hourly position. I am interested in, um, in creating a position for um, whatever you'd, we'd like to call it, whatever we want that title to be, but like a park manager, an assistant director um, currently, and it, was, it would be a seasonal position just to help out during the summertime. We kind of got a feel for that this year, having Owen be at the park. He's been there for four years now. Um, he served in the internship position, but it, it, he was almost serving in the assistant director role um, to the point. I mean, we're open from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, so that's 10 hours a day, uh, not including opening, closing seven days a week. I, I, I can't be there 70, 80 hours a week. It's just not feasible. Um, and Owen served and assisted in that role a lot. Um, but I just in my experience, it's that I don't want to leave the park without an adult figure. I, I don't think we should be leaving it to 15 to 18 year old uh, students to run the park and to handle various situations that happen. It needs to be somebody who is an adult there. And so that some an adult can be there when we're open during our open so hours. Owen, I don't know Owen, and so he's an adult? Yeah, uh, yes, yes, yes. And what are you paying him currently? We're currently paying him $13 an hour. And you're proposing to raise him to what? Um, my suggestion would be 15 to $16 an hour. So that's, the, yeah, Amber, so that's, it, it's, it's changing a title um, with more responsibility and more dollars, but it's not really adding a position, is it? Or would you be replacing him in his existing position? Yes, we would need to replace him in his existing position. Which is? Uh, the town of Culver intern. Okay, the intern. Yes. Okay, we let's still go back want to keep an intern though. Yeah. You do want to, right. Mm -hmm. 
and now concession let's go back to concession what are you going to do there um my suggestion we're currently paying eight dollars an hour and my suggestion is nine dollars per hour how many people do you have there four four to five And are they repeat people or are they usually new? Concessions are usually new. We usually grab concession workers into the lifeguard position. So they're usually new. And hourly compensation for the intern, Amber? What was that? Hourly compensation for the intern? Uh, 12 to 13. I have also suggested that Amber build into the salary increase, an increase for herself for her Parks and Rec certification or master's degree and level of experience, something more significant than $1,000. And I was recommending 10%. Where is she currently now? Forty-three. 43. 43, okay. Yeah. I would like to bring that up to something closer to 50. And then the last position that leaves us with is maintenance, um, which they currently, like the lifeguards, they make $9 an hour. And I would like to see the same increase, whatever that may be. For the lifeguards, I like it to be the same for maintenance. They do the brunt of the work at the park. And yeah. so my suggestion would be $11 an hour for our maintenance workers. And we have two to three maintenance workers each year. And when do they, when do they typically? Mid-May to mid-August. Is that true of your lifeguards and your concession people? Too? That's, yeah. And then, of course, you have our year-round maintenance workers on top of that. But those are workers who are only doing about 10 to 15 hours a week outside of the summer season. Definitely. Job. Yeah, yeah, right. during throughout the year, yeah. And then the only other thing I, I'd want to bring up is for, you know, in, with CRC, we did get that funding to make the downstairs area of the Beach Lodge kind of a space for teenagers to go and exist and hang out. Um, you know, if, if we do and we continue with that intent, we have to, to provide them a space year round. It has to be staffed. It's, it's not something I'm comfortable leaving um, unsupervised. So uh, that would be an additional concession stand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little, a little scary. Uh, <laughs> so it'd be something, you know, um, three days a week. You know, I'm thinking like the weekends, like the Thursday, Friday, Saturday type of thing. That'd be um, the only day it's open. Those days. I yeah, I think so. At least to start, I I wouldn't be interested in doing it every day. I, I think it'd be pointless Monday, Tuesday when I don't think a lot of kids would utilize that space. At least what from what I've seen in the community, every time there's kids kind of hanging out or like existing around town, or especially like on Fridays, like when they have they leave school and then they have this weird gap of time before an athletic event. Um, so like. Thursday, Friday, Saturday timeline is kind of what I'm thinking. Um, having session stand attendant, a few less hours on Thursday and Friday, and a little bit more of an increase on Saturday. So, you know, three to four hours Thursday, Friday, and then probably like five to six on a Saturday. Kind of, and then I'd want to see how it goes before committing, you know, a bunch of people to work down there. So, your lifeguards and your concession people typically how many hours a week do they work? During the summer? 
really varies. Um, I would say between really depends on the kid. 25 to 45 hours <laughs> the range you see them coming in at 25 to 45 hours a week yeah so but i mean these are kids who i have a sports camp this week i have a family vacation so we'll have a kid working a ton one week they'll work 45 hours and then the next week they have or, you know they'll have to be out for athletics and then but yeah on average 20 it's a big gap 25 to 45 hours a week Does the um, request of the 150 grand cover all these increases in the universe? Yes, it does. I mean, I'm looking at, I call them part time people. Talking about what pay raises is two dollars an hour, two dollars an hour, and mm -hmm. lifeguards and, and concession working. Take twenty five or forty five. Well, the request is one fifty five, but the difference is. 55. 55, yeah, right. I'm looking at that difference bill. Right, I understand. And I'm, and I'm going to go back to, okay, this is the expense side. What are you going to do on the revenue side? To make up for that, you mean? Yeah, to narrow the gap. Yeah, I mean, the revenue side of things, I mean, I'll be increasing, like, for example, for our, um, uh, we are all out on like boat slits, obviously, but I'll be increasing our jet skis, uh, not a ton, but we have additional space for that. Every year I add a little bit more. Um, we have people on the wait list who'd like to be added and I can add about eight more spaces coming in at about $500 a piece. Um, but otherwise, I think that's the only additional revenue from the park side of things. Yes, you can get it. Yeah. <laughs> how, yeah, how were the concessions this year based on past? Uh, we were up this year. No, we were up this year. We're doing more because we keep introducing more um, hot food items. Uh, you see it compared to. Give me just a second. Yeah. I'm sharing my screen so everybody's going to see. While Karen's looking that up, the other thing about this budget that makes it look higher, we cut the 60,000 in for regional stellar. That was actually budgeted last year. We haven't spent it yet this year because we haven't started construction. So we don't know, you know, will this come out in this calendar year or next calendar year or a combination of both? Right. If it doesn't all come out this calendar year, then we look way ahead on last year's budget. Mm -hmm. Whereas if it comes out, now we'll we be able to decrease this one. Yeah, we factored in because we are getting a late start on the regional seller project. Right. We factored in that money for a, a, a chunk of it for next year in hope in case you know if we if we spend it this fall, then we won't really need to utilize those funds this year. Right. But then if we don't. We need to have that line items. If we don't spend it this year, we need those funds because the majority of the construction that will be done will be in the spring of 2023 now with pushback of playground equipment lead times. And if we don't stick it in there, we'd have to appropriate it. Yeah. Right. No, I got exactly. That. It's really was budgeted last year for this year. Um, how much excess demand is there for these jobs? Besides the people that are employed, do you get like to pick one out of two, or All is right. it almost to the point where yeah. you're scraping to I, get someone? I'm I turned down of a staff of 23 every year. I've turned down about three. Yeah. So I'm not <laughs> raking in the applications. In the meantime, yeah. inflation is up eight and a half percent in right. July. Yeah. So you get, that's got to be unbacked, Ralph. And everyone else is increasing the wages. You yeah. You had McDonald's going 15. Yeah. 
And no, I have kids. I, I mean, I sat down and I did like end of season like conversations and feedback with all the employees. I just sent out a survey and a lot of the responses I'm getting back, I want to come back, but I can go to all the make $15 an hour. Yeah. You know, it's like, and honestly, I, 11's on the low end, but I think we have a really good staff who enjoy each other and it's a big social draw for a lot of them. Um, so we make up in that way. But I, I mean, for a lakefront property, 11 is actually on the lower end. So these are all things that have to be in backdrop and we, oh, we no. don't operate in a vacuum, whether we like it or not. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Amber, a question um, going back to the assistant manager or whatever title um, we'd end up giving it in the intern position. Um, mm -hmm. Could you t talk a little bit if if we didn't fund the intern position, but you got the assistant manager position? Um, what I mean, I, I know it's nice to have an intern. It's supposed to a training ground for you know for future staff. Um, but what would be the implications of not having the intern, but having the assistant manager? Um, I mean, for one, the, the system that we've set up is one that our employees can look at and see opportunity for growth. And I'd be hesitant to give that, like if I, like let's say I didn't implement that internship position, I know of, because that park manager position is predominantly my in my mind in a, for an adult, there's no growth for the kids that are at the, the in the park department. So then like you would stay through the point that you become a head lifeguard and then there's like this massive gap of a position. They have nothing to work toward for one. And then two, um, I mean, those interns are helping out. Like, I mean, just based on the experience I had with Owen even there, he, he basically was serving this summer as an assistant park director. And I had plenty of work for our intern um, as well. So, which was James. Um, I mean, I just, I'd be afraid that there wouldn't be any opportunity to grow for the the kids there's no incentive there's no and then also like you're saying the, the ability to train whoever that is to kind of do that work like i mean owen's a perfect example he sort of like worked his way up and got into the point where he's i s could see him doing that sort of position someday um i had there's plenty like the summer time there's plenty of work to go around He'd almost also still be wanting to hire that more experienced, you know, the four year kid. So we'd still be sort of going, can we do a raise on this, this kid? So we get the experience back. Might as well call it an intern or call it a senior something. Or Also, anytime I've had an intern, another thing that they bring to the table is like James was and Owen were lifeguard certified. They served in every position. I mean, they were, if I, if somebody called off, they were working maintenance for Fourth of July, including myself, were lifeguards. I mean, to have those numbers and to be able to fill in those gaps when needed, that's when our interns step in a lot of the times too. They're playing a lot of, they're playing basically every role at the, mm -hmm. and the same goes for Owen and me as well. You asked about concession sales, and I don't have the expenses, but last year it was about $9,300. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. $9,300, and this year it's right around $11,000. That's assuming you raise the prices. You raise prices this year on concessions. Uh, no, I did last year. You expanded the offerings to get the extra money. Yes. You, yeah. yeah. Right. We right. sold like more hot dogs and all yeah. stuff like that. And I'm hoping to expand that menu a little more too. I want to. I want to get a better understanding about boat slips. Okay. So, how many slips do you offer? 150 boat slips. 150 slips. Well, give or take. Uh, there's, there's so there's uh 55 on a so you're looking at a hundred six 
six U boat slips. Yeah. That number's right. And you so charge because we, we got rid of two on AP. Right? Okay, so what do we charge? Um, we we charge between nine hundred fifty and fifteen hundred. Nine hundred and fifty. Yeah, to fifteen hundred. Okay, so something on what the location location and residency status and whether or not you hit the five percent discount deadline or not. Okay. When was the last time you raised the boat fees or the dock fees? The last person to raise the dock fees was Anna Campbell in the log. That's in her last year. So that would have been five, four or five years ago. Four years ago. And how about before that? Is there a... Before that, it had been what, eight years? Or 11? I feel like there was it's one in quite between a while. there and then it had been over that. And it's a 10 year waiting list. Yeah. And the Boys and Girls Club got. $12,000. $12, yes. There's a lot of demand there. Yes, there is. How much do you feel you could raise the prices? I mean, you've got a captive audience. Yeah. So they're not going to go in. No, they're not. Um, I mean, I. Wanna, you don't want to bleed them to death, but. Right. You know, we have an avid increase. Yeah. No, I, I think That's what I'm saying. I'm looking at the income. Sorry, we, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and inflation and inflation's up eight and a half today, just to remind you. Yeah. It's just that every time we raise them, we price out some of the like teachers and you know that same workforce we're fighting to get housing for gets priced out of stuff like this. I'm just putting that out there. I come from a business background. I so. get it. I mean, I could, give you, could we you, offer could we offer a discount to school employees or town employees? We don't have to worry about the town employees. None of us have a vote there. And I would suggest, like, I don't know. And right now, with I was going to suggest, like, could increase their non-resident, but right now we're only getting residents because. We were asked to give priority to residents. Right. So like now I'm only if you're a non-resident, I'm like you know you won't get a slip ever. Um, because I have 50 plus residents on the wait list right now. Um, so we're only now bringing in people who own property in Colburn Union Township. So how many turn over a year? How many Please. It's decreasing now because people don't want to give up their spaces because they know they'll never get it back. Um, so when I first started, we were seeing about like 10. Now it's only like three or four. Percent or peers? Or peer peer, peer uh, spaces. Box. Yeah, okay. Like my neighbor, he's a summer resident, but he has a boat slip. Yeah, yeah. We have a lot of people who's second. You see what I'm saying? It's the second home. Yes, yeah. But it, our rule is if you own property in Culver. That's right. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. And he's going to, he's going to. Pay that boat slip every year. Yes. He doesn't care. No, yeah. That's yeah. That's that. a lot of people. Yeah. I think it's time to raise them. I do too. I agree. We could also talk about uh, enhanced security. I, I know we're talking about cameras and things like that in the area. So you know to explain to people to offset some of that cost. Um oh, yeah. We have cameras. We have cameras. But I, mean, I know we've we, we've ad, we've added the cameras, but we never we've not increased the cost of of the fees or um, since we've added those additional security and wireless in that area. That's fine, well, that's but I don't think we need Anna that justification. Sold the last yeah. raise, huh? Yeah. yeah, and I mean, if we're gonna raise it, we got enough justification. To support yeah, I would say, oh, you, you raised a two thousand dollars because of cameras. That's I, I wouldn't use that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you're saying 900 to 1500? Uh, so, uh, yeah, 950 is the lowest. Okay. So that's a resident interior paid by January 15th. And about how many of those do you have? I, I couldn't, I don't know off the top of my head. So yeah, I, I'm thinking about what's the distribution of these That's where I payments. Would go. Yeah. Well, we're now we're also now leaning towards the lower fees because it's only residents. Right. It's a higher fee for non-residents. 
So that same person, if you're a non-resident, 5% discount by January 15th, you're paying $1,187. I think it's dirt cheap. I think we should take them all up. I, I agree with you. And the other thing that I think is, is that in due respect to what Bill said about his neighbor, but I think there's a difference between being a resident and being a uh, uh, Floridian. Floridian. <laughs> uh, well, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. But, but they uh, all pay the same tax. Homestead, is the they problem. Are homesteader, I think yeah. there's a difference between. They're all paying the same tax. Yeah. They're all paying taxes. And well, they're actually they're actually paying more taxes because they don't have a homestead exemption. Home. Yeah, did you hear, Rich? Rich if you're not out the time, you're paying a higher tax, right? Because it's their sec. It's it's not homestead. I, I agree. We should raise the rates, but I I don't. Um, you know, I think if they're paying property taxes, they they are in a different class than someone who just comes in and and. Uh, um, has a boat slip, and, but has no investment in the town. Could we possibly, um, you know, obvi it's obvious that you all want to raise a boat slips, which yeah. is fine. Um, could we move on the discussion though? Yeah, sure. Um, to get through the budget information okay. on expenses yeah. side, sure. yep. um, just to, because this is obviously it's not something that we can just do today. You're right. going to have to have a public hearing, make it known to the public. You know that type of thing. You can say, well, we're we're probably bringing an extra X amount in revenue, mm -hmm. and that's you know that's possibility. But until it's until it's passed, you can't factor it into your into your decision anyway on the budget. So, okay. um, just, no, just because we don't, because we don't know how much of a budget we can do, if we have an idea of if you know how much the receipts are now and if we say right we just want to increase it like five percent it would give us a ballpark figure yeah. of what that increase would be so that we know how much we have to cut out of budget mm -hmm. you know can't do it today but at least right no I, and idea. i'm not but it, we're starting to get into the a lot of discussion that yeah. you know not necessarily i mean we could be here all day yeah. discussing yeah. yeah how much and who and what and where we're just making the point that we need to increase Yes, Please. and that's fair. And that's fair. Yeah. Okay. Let's go on. Okay. Um, does anybody have any other questions about salary line item, or should I? Okay. Um, the, the next is longevity. That that was determined by well, Karen. And yeah, we got that's another discussion. Okay. Uh, same with benefits. Um, lawn and maintenance, uh, we haven't been really using that line item, um, so I, we decreased that by 2,500. Um, concessions uh, kept it about the same. We seem to be in that same ballpark. Uh, sand and gravel, that increases because of the uh, new sidewalk that was installed. Um, we're having to put in more sand and then the, the rock that kind of sits along it is helping with erosion control. Um, so it's we had to increase that line item based on what we spent this year. Um, postage, um, just up by 100. Obviously, the post stamps are going up. Uh, I left telephone line item to Karen. Um, yeah, we've got, well, so we've got Amber's oh, yeah, cell phone. The, we, we've had to add a phone. A, the permanent landline to for the elevator, elevator yeah. and also because elevator. it's a park or it's it's by a body of water we have to have a landline for 911 mm -hmm. so those two lines are more expensive than if we could flip over mm -hmm. to like a vp or a, right. a yeah. or something so, like that so those yeah. are kind of fixed costs uh insurance bonds that was also <laughs> yeah, I, I I based I gave it a 15% increase over what we had had last year, or what we paid this month for insurance. So. Uh, electric gas up by a thousand. Um, I think the only other thing we decreased repairs. We haven't been using that line item nearly as much, and we won't need to as much next year because we repaired a lot of our equipment this year. Um, and then peer repairs, that's up by 4,000. 
Um, the reasoning for that, one, uh, CPR, the sockets are a disaster. Um, it like, if you look at it, like it was, uh, I had a conversation with Tim, got that quoted out, that work, um, and that, between that and then bringing the peers, we had to raise the peers because of the lake level. We have to bring those back down next year. Um, when we revisit our um, contract. peer contract, we need to include raises and um, bringing it back down. We'll do that the next time now that we are aware of that issue. But for now, it's not in our contract, so we have to include it in our expenses. Um, so between those two peer repairs and just like general repairs, that comes out to four thousand. Um, moving on, superintendent expenses. We weren't really using it, so I bumped it down to five hundred. Um, uh, sales tax, uh, and then peer install and removal. That's just based on the contract we had. It went up by thousand. Um, from the new contract that was signed this year. Um, contractual services. We added an additional seven thousand. Um because obviously we're spending a little bit more than what's been appropriated. Um, so we added about 7,000 because we had, in 2022 we'd given, was it, was 45,000 appropriated in 2021? And then we spent 50, so. Yeah. What's all the contract? I mean, it's, it's the catch-all, like the Cinta stuff. So, that yeah, we have support. a lot of the additional fees are coming from Syntax <laughs> services. Oh, okay. The yeah. IT, like okay. anything, yeah. Um, Aeropest. Yeah, all those items. And then um, billing improvements added an additional 10,000. Um, that is anticipating next year, I'd like to uh, redo the parking lot um, since the beach lodge construction, soon to be the beach lodge drainage project and soon to be the um, playground project, our parking lot does not match the lines at all. Um, we have knockouts of our speed bumps, that sort of thing, just general repairs. It hasn't been fixed since I remember when Anna was here, that was the last time it has been. Uh, refilled and relined. So, uh, like our handicap spaces are not up to date at all. I met with um, I met with uh, uh, per Bob's request uh, somebody that a uh, company that does the resealing and relining, and he was telling like how our handicaps are set up is not up to date at all. Um, so we just need to reline everything and reseal it. Do we have the appropriate number of how much handicaps? Oh, is, I mean, is there a ratio that we have to have? There is a ratio you're supposed to have in work. <clears throat> I, I don't know whether or not we're at it, but I would assume we're not. Okay. <laughs> and then, like, where we would position certain handicap space, like just being, I just being strategic about where we place those, and it all just needs updated. So, uh, we're hoping to do that project next year, and then um, based on funds, I'd also like to get the exterior beach lodge balcony. Oh, resealed? Resealed. It's okay. it's a disaster. So that I would also like to get that project. And you think you can get all that done for 10 grand? Um no, but but between it would be 40. It's a 10 increase, but $40, 40,000 to do all of it. Right, but, yeah. yeah. But, no, I wouldn't have 10 would not cover. No, but the 10 would okay. Yeah, yeah, that would cover all of it. All right. Amber, I don't want to um, necessarily get into the discussion today, but uh, I would suggest that um, probably for in the off season, you spend some time talking or studying the peer replacement capital and um, investment project. I suspect those peers are probably eight to 10 years old, maybe, if not older. Um, and it we should probably have some type of uh, replacement plan because they're not going to last forever and even maintaining them and replacing boards and slats and things like that. Um, at some point, they are going to need to be replaced. It's going to be an expensive proposition and it's a huge source of revenue for us. So we don't want to lose that. So um, I would suggest, you know, we we look at a some type of capital plan to make some reserves for that. Okay, yeah, and that's a conversation I can talk with Tim. Great. 
right now Tim is replacing panels as like we see necessary. So some of them are newer than others, and then like it's the deck wood. No. What is it? Uh, it's, it's vinyl the, fencing. Yeah, vinyl. There we go. That's the word. Oh. Yeah, it's it's a fencing product actually that he's modified for for decking. Um, but at some point, the I mean, the steel um, gets bad. The you know, I'm not sure how many of those are in sockets or not. Um, but I just know from other experiences with peers that we should have some type of replacement plan um, where we either set aside some monies or recognize that at some point in time we're going to have to replace, say, 25% of them for four years in a row. We may want to look at different material then if it depreciates that quickly. I, I mean, if you have an aluminum, you get a good 25, 30 years out of it. Yeah. It also depends on like who installs it too, though, and what they can install. Right. Yeah, yeah these 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 piers were custom made by by Timmy and Portside at the time. Um, they are not um, something that is readily available commercially. Um, and so, and that's, you know, there, there's an advantage and disadvantage to that. Um, um, and I agree the aluminum piers are, you know, will last longer, but you're increasing your cost significantly as you do it. So I, again, I'm just, I, we, we need to study the problem so we don't get, you know, all of a sudden yeah. in two years, realize we've got a, a, a huge replacement cost. Thank you, Rich. Um, and then that just leaves us with regional seller. We just bumped it down. Uh, to 35, but that's just anticipating we'll be um, spending some, because some of the work that's, will be done yeah. in the fall, and then some right. of the work will be done in the spring. So, this will come out of this year's next year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Everything. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Very well prepared. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. And I would say at some point in time, work on some peer numbers as to you know the categories and all that. Yeah. In the various. Okay. Since that's. Yeah. I'll start. Big topic of discussion. Yes. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can start that. looking into it and kind of like. Yeah. I'll start. Well, you know, like, how much are we at now? And right. Blah, blah, blah. Thank you. Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take a five minute break and take a five minute break, or we'll move yeah. on in. Yeah. I, I advertise oh. not like specific time, so oh, we so can just we take it. You've got until 3 30. The elephant in the room. <laughs> between Corey, between Corey.
Yeah, you'll be right back. She's like, go ahead and start. Good. Yep, Well, hello, everyone. Hey, Addy. Hello. You want me to sit up here as well? Sure. Sure. Rich on? Yep. Yep. Good. I'll send you a digital copy of all this, Rich, if you'd like to have it. Sure. Thank you. Uh, the packet I gave you is just kind of like an overview of what I was going to talk about. I won't read it all to you unless you read that at your own leisure. You can look at later on if you like. Uh, there's just a lot of different information on there. But I will go uh, right to the budget here and we can go line by line and I'll talk about each one for you here. So we'll start with salaries. Uh, salaries, I'm proposing a $51,515 increase from last year. Uh, this includes a market wage adjustment for the staff as noted in the EMS poll grade section, which would be in your packet there, it would be the poll grade down there is what I'm trying to look at to kind of see moving forward to kind of get a better idea of cost year by year. Forward here. Uh, it's on the second page. Next one, it'll be a third page for you there. Mm -hmm. Got it. Um, so in there, it, it breaks down um, the pr proposed wages that I'd like to increase for next year, along with the different. Uh, Can't think of the right word here. Um, as long as, as with the title of the, each one of the extra people that we have doing this. Um, with that, uh, the biggest one is mine. I was looking at more of a a parody with what uh, the chief of police has. Uh, feel that where that role is and where my role is, uh, what I've been asked to do, and and my other roles that I've been taking on as well and speaking. There's a lot that I'm bringing to the table here, and I feel that my years of service um, is is paying off in more ways than one, and and I'm looking at that as uh, to be parity amongst both of us here. But it was strictly up to all of you to decide as well. So with the salaries, along with the market uh, wage adjustment, this also includes a more detailed account of hours work needed for 2023, which you'll see just above in total hours. This talks about the hours on the shift, uh, my hours, the extra events, vacation, sick time, personal time, holiday training, all that is either required that we need to have or do either through the medical director or through the state that we have to provide. And so, when I break down the hours of the full time and the balance and the difference, um, as I show you there, as we talked about last year, starting with adding more full time people, which I'll get to uh, in a little bit here, you will see that the hours and the hours that has worked and the hours that is left over each time, um, how many full time part uh, people we would need to have and how many part time hours that would still be left so we could uh, effectively run the department. Now, since about 2019, if you would have asked me then, you know, where the wages would be, and the struggles that would be, I would think that uh, they wouldn't be where they're at today. But with the pandemic um, that has caused us with staffing and overall adjustment of the workforce from the pool that we pull from, uh, we've seen that we've seen a faster than, accept, than expected wage increase to combat a variety of these issues. 
We only expect this to continue for the coming years until waging and staffing can adjust and stabilize. Until then, we must adjust accordingly. While cost-cutting measures will always be looked upon, we must look to other sources of revenue. While public safety as a whole has come upon rough times of wages, retention, morale, and a workforce that is becoming limited, these services are vital and essential to not only to the residents of the town of Culver and Union Township, they also support the surrounding communities in times of need as well. So reducing, eliminating will only reduce the quality of life and health and further diminish the essential services they provide to all that live and work and play in this community. The other, the other issue that we have with part of our wages retention and in, in our workforce is that Marshall County, the state, country is seeing a dramatic loss in professionals uh, within the public safety realm. Uh, within the state of Indiana, I talked to you guys in a couple of listening sessions, there's uh, roughly about 5,000 paramedics in the state of Indiana. Uh, so that 5,000 is, is serving the six and a half million people in the state. Um, and then the EMTs represent just about 20,000. And so that is a very small number of people that can actually do the actual jobs. And so we are seeing a historic uh, shift in the workforce and the people that we're pulling from. Uh, we see a lot of departments that are basically poaching other departments because of the wages and because of lateral movements that they're allowing within uh, their budgets to attract and, and retain people. We're seeing uh, sign on bonuses upwards of 20,000 uh, paid over two years and six months increments. Um, we're also seeing other sign on bonuses of smaller amounts, all that are you know hard to do for a variety of different reasons for different entities. Uh, with that, we're seeing a dramatic shift in the wages as well. Being a governmental entity, it's hard for us to adjust these wages mid year. Um, or any portion of the year because we, we run on a budget that is basically fixed and whatnot. So it's easier for some places because of a variety of other factors to change that uh, more rapidly, but it becomes very difficult for us. And so increasing these wages will also help us because with our workforce of about 20 to 22 right now, because we are, we are still dependent on part-time staff, we only have two people that actually live in the county that work here currently. Um, we have a third, but he's basically to the point where he's basically going to be retired here in the coming months. So I don't really factor him into the equation right now. So the workforce that's coming from here is not coming from here. It's coming from one to two counties over. And so they're even looking at um, their wages, the wages that they're working at their other job, their overtime prospects at their over job, other job. And so with the cost of inflation that we've talked about earlier, um, it is all becoming a factor to where they're looking at, well, do I want to come here for 12 hours and work versus do I want to come here for 36 hours and work and then get the best bang out of my buck to come where it's not really advantageous for me to come 12 hours. That's even affecting us on our special events um, for like football standbys. Who wants to come for just three hours and turn around and, and leave? And so these are things that you know we're trying to adjust, and we are we are filling it. Uh, but these are things that it can become an issue you know, moving forward here. But it's not one right now. But it is an area of concern. So increasing the wages where I would love to, I would love to go the dollar fifty an hour. Um, I I took a harder look at it and looking at some different things and figured that you know most likely the dollar is where it's going to be. Are we going to be on the lower spectrum with a lot of other places? Yes, we will be on the lower spectrum, um, but I still think it will be somewhat of a a positive factor for our employees to still maintain that and still have that. The biggest benefit is that increasing to another full-time person. This reduces the amount of hours that we have to depend on part-time staff that if the part-time staff doesn't want to work or they start working, we are seeing uh, this year alone, we've had four staff members become mandatory at their other job. And so they've had to call and cancel their shift 
because they're being held over at their other job. And so then that creates a negative effect for us as well, because then we have to find someone to try to work with last minute. Yes. How much lead time do you get, Jeff? On that uh, lead time, maybe 24 hours, um, maybe 36 at the most. We are we are a department that's not geared up for call offs. We're not geared up for long term injury, illness, medical leave, whatnot. We've had several em uh, employees part time and full have had medical leave for extended periods of time off with injuries not related to us um, for off extended time. So that affects us um, even more so because it's a limited pool pull from. So then that puts a strain on the system with a pull. And so, you know, if someone was to call or if someone was to work and get injured right now, there is probably a period of time of a couple hours, even if we had a completely full time staff, to get somebody in there, you know, if we can. There, it's not that we have two trucks so we can drop one, put another one in. The workforce is an hour plus away to get here. So there is times where we can run into, have we ran into that? No, we haven't run into there yet, but it's a, it's a concern. It's something on there. Have we tried to mitigate that by doing different things? Yes. Um, and so uh, between me and uh, some of the full timers, we make, you know, we, make, we make a decision when one of us goes out in the area, hey, who's available? If we can come in last minute, we have a little plan set up in place for those things. But do they always work out? Because we're not paying someone to be on call because that would be another cost all within itself. And so even that having an on call person, you still have a period of time where that person would have to get into work uh, because the workforce is just not here in the area here. So uh, that is there. So increasing another full time staff member increases our benefits. It doesn't really increase our salaries because um, we're already paying for that already within our part time. Yes, we will do have some built in overtime, and that's because if you go to uh, if you go to your, your 2022, your first page of your, your spreadsheet here, um, I broke down uh, everyone's pay hourly, 80 times, half time, 16 times, bi-weekly, yearly. Um, I also, with the part-time staff, it was just easier for me to break down at an equal basis of the current staff. So that mean that the part-time staff um, in the 400 hour range is all working 400 hours a year or the other group uh, working 571. No, that's not the case. It was just uh, an easy way to calculate out the hours that are that they're making up. So that could increase for some of those. Some of those could get overtime if they were to happen to work more because we can't find anybody else to work. Um, and so we try to use the uh, the part time as much as we can um, when things need to be filled, but sometimes it's not. And the same thing when it gets to the full time people, we try to use the lower, the lesser of the full time because it cuts down on a little bit of dollars as we go along. So can you explain the the I see where you have yearly it comes out to three ninety down there. Yes. Is that your projected for 2022 what's going to be spent on all salaries in other words that's what it was then it includes that would, overtime that includes the overtime okay. there there's a request on uh three to four ones is for this year that i'll get into break that down here see what i'm saying yeah see I, what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. line one. and right. th that's 2022 if you want to go to 2023 which is two pages over All right. All right. Okay. So, got it. Now, talking to a couple of you, one of your questions were, you know, overtime, overtime. How can we, how can we bring down some overtime? So, and still be able to have the services that we need. So, taking a look at it here, and still being able to effectively do this, but not have all this built-in overtime. Now. As you look at each and every each and every one of the people that are listed here in the top section as being the full time staff and including the full time six person, you will see what their yearly salary would be if the conditions were approved upon. So for, for some of these people, 
for them to sit here and, and come for 35 or $38,000 a year, they would not come here to work full time for $36,000, $35,000 a year, um, even with the benefits. So for them, some of this built in overtime is very beneficial. And plus the way we do our work schedules, it then would cause another issue when, when it comes to that as well. So I looked at Scott and I's and going and reducing ours to a 36 hour work week, um, reduce it, re removes our overtime. Now, does it mean that there can't be overtime that we get? No, there, that doesn't mean that. There's always the unknown exceptions that we can have. So when you go to the bottom there of that 436, and you take out the difference of overtime of 39,936, which would be Scott and I, that's what comes to the 397,772, 396,772. And so that's where I'm coming up with the 397 there. Is there, is there a little bit of, of uh, extra in there? Yes, there's a little bit when it comes to uh, vacation, sick time, holiday time kind of thing, because I took a broad average of what it could be. Um, so it could be plus or minus of that a little bit. It's a, it's a very hard one to sit there and say, these people are going to be using sick time. These people aren't going to be using sick time. They know they're going to use their vacation time. Um, and then the training there um, is they have critiques that they have to go to. They have required training that they have to have. And so depending on the different personnel, some may get it somewhere else uh, with their other job, but some may not. And so that that factor is factored. So um, is that number a, a guarantee not to go above 397? I would love to say yes, it's not, but it, it still could, depending on a variety of factors, whether it's sickness, health, injury, illness, um, major event, oh, you know, calls going over their their normal shift time. Um, those variables are in there. Those variables, I, I, I really can't determine too much. So it's a pretty, uh, pretty stiff number as best as I could. Any questions? You have a printed schedule with two sorts of day. Uh, it's all on the app. Uh, they have a app that they that we got that shows who's on, what shifts are available. They bid on them on a daily, on a bi-weekly or more monthly basis. It changes if someone calls off, then it goes out to them. Um, but they have, have a printed schedule that you can buy. Yes, I, I have that. Yeah, I can get that too. All right. So those are, uh, that is with the scheduling. So we try to do our scheduling about 45 days out. So we have a little bit of planning that if we have to uh, look at. So that is what the schedule there. Uh, so, excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're you're saying that they drive an hour, so what is that, 50 miles? Yeah, give or take, yeah. Yeah, so we're talking um, 30 to $35 travel costs if you take the government 62 cents mm -hmm. per mile. <clears throat> so that's working for free for a couple hours. Exactly. If you want to look at it that way, I never, I never did look at it that way, but yes, um, I see where you're going at yeah. with that. And if you go net, it's more than that. So. And so when you want someone to work for three hours to come to a standby, it's it's like they're not really not, not, not paid. Really even working. Right, right. Okay. We don't need to advertise that. No, I know <laughs> that. I'm I'm <laughs> I'm just stating the numbers, that's all. <laughs> um so with the potential adding that with that person that would increase our uh, benefits another forty seven two fifty. And then longevity, uh, it was increased by 625. Uh, the longevity would be for this year's hire, so that longevity wouldn't play in for another year, correct? Uh, we have five currently right now. So. 
presenting for you. That includes me. Is the reason the um, benefit to date through June is so much lower than what was appropriated? We st some of these people started late, I assume, in the year. The the higher that was approved last year, um, it didn't get higher until June. Until June, June or not June? It was like July. -ish. So that's four yeah, people. So the, you hired a fifth, and he didn't take. He didn't have benefit. I was going to say no, someone must not benefits. have. Brewster did? No, Brewster did, but Brewster right. won. No, I understand oh, that, okay. but so, he yeah. worked part of the year, yeah. so he didn't have benefits, so you saved money there. So the person that hired to replace that person hired in in June, and so they you're only paying a half a year. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just trying to figure out why that to date was so low. So somebody right. didn't take benefits. And, you know, you, you budget based on a, a family plan. Right. At the PPO level, so you don't get some of that lower cost. Correct. Plan. It may be a single person, maybe you know a spouse. Mm -hmm. So those those numbers are going to vary. That makes sense. All right. Then moving on to office supplies. Uh, I kept I I moved that to fifteen hundred. And then gasoline, I brought up another 175. Uh, even though we were a little, we were going to be a little higher on, on gasoline, basically diesel this year. Um, the new truck has gasoline, so I'm thinking that's going to bring a little bit of the cost down. And so that's why I'm, I'm leaving it just a little bit high, about just doing a five percent on most of these other line items, as I'm doing a five percent increase on them uh, from where we're at here. Um, Medical supplies is just a 500. Uh, uniforms is a decrease of 2,000. Um, this year we added uh, the, the coats, but unfortunately the coats went way over what they were budgeted for last year because of uh, cost increases from the pandemic here and those costs. So I reduced that down and figured what do we need to have for to replace uniforms on a yearly basis with the staff. The next one is a $75 increase for other supplies. And then the other next biggest bump would be 5,000 for training. And what I'm looking at here is in the training is, you know, I know we've talked about this, we've done it before, um, but if we, uh, I'm looking to, uh, uh, if approved, allow us to reimburse a member of the department for completing paramedic school. I know we've gone down this road before, but we have not done, uh, and but we have done this not in our, uh, not only in our department, but other town, other departments within the town. This would be a two-year deal, uh, with each year being it'd be included in each budget for the next this this budget and next budget for five thousand, and that would reimburse them their cost that they put in to the paramedic school. This would be a contract that then they would give us two years of service for this and would keep us with the potential of having the uh, employment stay here and not go to somewhere else um, to potentially make a higher wage. Um, we went down that road that's once a, before. Yeah, it's a good idea, but it's not enforceable. Yeah. If that's weird, I, I, it's, it's been done with other agencies and it's, it's worked for them. Um, and I was just throwing it out as and a potential. We you can't sue them for the money they have. They can pay them two thousand dollars for their for their training, and then they just disappear. Or they don't pull the shifts. Or they, yeah, or they don't pull the shifts or whatever. Well, um, this person would be. This person's a full time person, so this person would. Well, if he's full time, he should already be there. This is an advanced MT going to school to complete into the next level. So we've moved to well, how many advanced do you have? Just just time? one, just one. It's a dying, it's a dying breed and uh, it still satisfies uh, some things with the state. But she has decided to to do that, and it was a it's a thought process to 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 potentially keep her, not to sit there and say that she is leaving or they are leaving, 
but it was just a, a possible for retention. So. Well, she could make a lot more money as paramedic than an advanced basic program. What skills do they pick up in this? What what skills is it's more medications, more than skills. The skills are there, it's the medication okay. that, that increase the, the abilities. Uh, but overall it's they're relatively close, you know, not to mince the two together, um, but it's more about medicines than anything else. Okay. But you know, last year you had a change rate. Two thousand didn't spend a cent. This year you budgeted 2000 and spent a cent yet. Yeah. Why don't you, if she went to them, do it on an individual basis? I mean, who else do you have that thinks that be reimbursed? Yeah, I have a couple that are interested, but there's no there's no firm commitment. And there's a there's advanced no they are they are they're thinking about going to paramedic school but it's there it, it's it's not I, I agree with what you're saying that it's not really necessarily enforceable yes can can uh can the county to the town attorney go after them with a with some type of legal maneuver yes it, would it be would it be a waste of our money to then spend the legal avenue to try to get that money back probably so um you know it's it's one of those things that I looked at it as, you know, we can try it. If it doesn't, if you do want to go, I'm perfectly fine either way. I'm just looking at a way to potentially retain if and not saying that person is leaving or not. Leaving. It's just another way to uh, find a way to retain. To that point, so I had lunch with fellow clerk treasurers as soon and that issue came up um, and there are some towns that do have that and they had people pay it back and there are other towns that have it and they didn't so it's you know um you have people that are good actors and realize that yeah you made the investment and yeah i'll go ahead and pay you back mm -hmm. um, right. and so i mean you, you could put that in the place it's not saying that they will or won't but it is you know possibility you know because 99 percent of our employees they're 100 percent trained and they come in the door. It's not like like the police department. They're not for the most part, and they send them away to the academy. You know, we're not doing any of that. We are strictly when they come in the door, they have all that. My question is, isn't that different from what it was back when we paid it? People that were trained when we were sending them off. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, the same level. What he's talking about. I mean, we had two advanced who wanted their paramedic. They had, if we paid for the course, right. they had to stay another year at least. One so of them did, the one of them did not. Yeah. So we are talking apples and apples. Yeah. 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 Okay, that's question. And Thank you. both those people did, did leave. Yeah, they, yeah. I mean, as far as I know, they left pretty one, soon right One after. stayed for their year, one did not. Okay. One left a month after. So you get about a 50% success rate. Well, and I had the council enforced it, I could have just garnered his check out of a different department that he collected money from, mm -hmm. frankly. Okay. Well, we were told at the time he couldn't. Okay. All right. Well, I, I mean, that isn't going to make or break you. No. No. The 5,000, so. Go on down through your rest of your yeah. All right. Uh, legal fees, uh, just increasing that uh, by 5%. Now, now back to you, Sally, with some of these things that aren't spent. Some of these things, yes, I do have some things that I want to buy, but with the way that the inflation went, with the way things were going, I wanted to hold off on a couple of things that, you know, weren't mission critical for right now, that if we had to, it could be used for more um, things. Yeah. To help offset understand. So, um, so then the next line item would be telephone there, uh, just increasing that 480. And that's basically a 5% increase. Um, travel and expense, just a 5% increase there. Uh, advertising, $25. Uh, 
insurance and bonds, 5%. Uh, repairs and maintenance is not a 5%. That is just the, um, the ongoing repairs and the need to put tires and uh, on the other truck there. So that increases for that. That particular repairs and maintenance is machine. Vehicle, yes, correct. Uh, soft water, just a 5% increase there. Uh, lease purchase, nothing. Um, construction, $1,000 uh, to 3500 There's a couple of classes that I want to have put on next year. And so these will cover help cover the cost of these classes. And then contractual services, uh, additional 5%. Uh, we have one more final payment on the monitors. And I've been using part of that contractual money to help offset the cost of those of those that final payment of that because that also covers our maintenance contract. And so we don't need the what's, maintenance. What's in the contractual services besides the bills? It and then any kind of maintenance contract or report writing software, stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Uh, machinery equipment, just 250. Uh, radios is the final biggest jump of 1050, and that was to upgrade the radio system in the station, allow the radio communication to be heard in all the areas of the station, provide a radio that needs to be upgraded, plus the radio is outdated and cannot be serviced, needs to be replaced. They did a band aid on it earlier this year with the, um, with the, with the battery backup system, and we just need to have a more reliable system within the, within the place. Um, Already doing one part of it this year with a, a new alerting system, but that probably will not be in until the end of it. So I'm waiting on that. What was that updated? That radio, I couldn't even tell you. It's 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 it could be. Um, building repairs just 250, and that is it. The overall, it's an 18.59 percent increase uh, from last year. Jeff, real quick, could you go back to medical supplies? Is that something that you purchase more later in the year? Uh, or is it expires? That, I, that is going to include, that's part of like this year, it's part of next year. I have some narcotic requirements that are coming up that um, I'm going to be buying some stuff for that. And it's also going to be rolling into next year as well. So. Okay. Um, so part of that ten thousand that you haven't spent this year will probably right, get spent later this right. year. That that ten thousand that money is oxygen. That's anything you know. We do have some stuff. It all depends on expiration dates. It all depends on different times of the year. Um, and then part of that whole switch over with the narcotics. Then we're going to be uh, getting some additional equipment, biometric lock. Uh, all required by the state. So uh, I'm trying to do it in only two part of the year here. So okay. what's your lease purchase? That is something that Karen takes care of. That's your payment. So it's, yeah, the payment on the ambulance. I'm sorry. The payment on the ambulance. Oh, thank you. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I know for sure. <laughs> Any other questions? I have one. I'm just not educated fully on this yet. Um, where do the receipts or uh, the services go? General funds. Goes into the general funds. Because that's, and then that, okay. is, you don't get to see a specific number. Number. Well, there are on the front. Yeah. So I've, I've got it segmented out, but it's oh, yeah. not its okay, own I fund to say, you know, this money goes in, this money goes out, but 
because the budget is so large, it's much larger than what they're bringing in anyway. It's it's self limited. Right. Plus, part of that right. bill is like our payer mix. Um, and what, yeah, what is the percent that you two, actually two, recover? Two years ago, last the year before in 2021, we uh, I proposed a fees change. And I presented to the group on what our payer mix is. And a payer mix is what does the community have when it comes to what type of insurance they have. Mm -hmm. We are more 60% Medicaid and Medicare. And so like our average run is uh, about $900, mm -hmm. uh, give or take with mileage and everything. And by the time Medicare uh, which is the basically the gold standard they set the tone for everyone else yeah. they <coughs> basically half of that or less and then on top of all that then there is there's other requirements that come along with it that they may even make it be even smaller amount. and then with some of those people they're not required to pay anything else so if you were lucky enough to have a supplement we can go after the supplement but mm -hmm. if you don't you, you can't um, I looked at this year, I talked to Acumen this year about adding a fuel surcharge. Acumen is? As the billing provider. Oh, okay. Um, I asked them about a bill, uh, fuel surcharge that possibly you could uh, attack onto the bills. Now, any type of additional surcharge, whether it's a marketing fee or even if we did a fuel surcharge, hasn't been done in the industry, marketing fees have. Um, that is nothing. Medicare, private insurances, nobody will pay that amount. That would strictly go to the patient. And when you have people with Medicare and Medicaid, they are not required to pay that. And okay. so um, this year with the new passages with the laws, uh, they're not going to they're gonna, they're gonna now stop reporting uh, delinquencies on medical bills. And so there is the thought that we are going to see a reduction in some payments even more because it doesn't affect the credit. And so uh, then it becomes, you know, how much do we want to try to collect <laughs> paying more to have the, the company try to collect it? And we're even getting a very even smaller amount. Um, Got it. And so we're right now, we have about just over 90,000 in outstanding debt or outstanding bills. Mm -hmm. um, and that will flow over time. There is no hard, fast rule that we could stop today, quit today, and you're going to get 90,000 next you know, couple of years. It could take 10, 15 years uh, to get that money, or you may only still get half or a quarter of that money. Um, we did change the fee schedule with some other things to help offset uh, based upon the recommendations by Acumed when it came to treatment, no transport. Um, when we just go and sugar somebody up with some medication or some juice, or we give them a, you know, a dress their band aid or whatnot. Um, but there again, when it comes to Medicare and Medicaid, you can't bill for that. Uh, it. They, there's another, there's another component that we can't, they can't even get a bill for that. And so. And there's nothing we can do with this as far as bad debt. We, we pass along to um, Arbor Credit to try to collect on it, but. So we have a company that goes after it, but it's up to them. So uh, they are not very successful then? Oh, well, I'm not saying that they're not successful. It's yeah. just, you know, they collect what they can. And like Jeff said, if it's not going to, you know, your credit report, how much? Yeah, how much are they going to, how much are they going to really pay? Anymore? We're yeah. worried about uh, it, right? And, and and some people, they are people that pay $25, $10, you know, a week or a month uh, to pay off their bill. And so, um, that doesn't help anyone in the bottom line because right. uh, it just costs you even more money to provide that service. And unfortunately, it's a, it's a service that is never going to make money. I mean, when I came to you the first of the year and talked about call volume, um, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna fall into about 500 calls in that realm for the year. Um, with that, we'll see probably about 300 of those calls are actually billable calls. Um, so. If we were to go to about 850 calls for the year, uh, we would be, you would all be feeling more comfortable. We change our pace. Some of us. <laughs> yeah. We'd be, we'd be, no, no, whether you're would one be of them. more uh, comfortable because of yeah. the revenue that's coming yeah. in. And the revenue just, there's no, there's no good 
algorithm says you're getting this all the time. And it all depends on the type of calls that we go on, the type of people that we go on. Um, then we have places like the academy to where they may have the local insurance or they may not have any insurance that we find out. And then it goes overseas to a to a family that lives overseas to whether they may pay it or they may not. Um, uh -huh. So those are things that we worked on um, last year. Yeah, I mean, they, they thought that all their students and parents were paying their EMS bills. As it turns out, that's one of the worst populations to serve from a bill paying standpoint. Yeah, how do you how do you collect it when it's overseas? It mm -hmm. gets very complicated. Or even out of state. Yeah. So and, what, so one of the things you have done since you've been here is you increase the billing efficiency, which is enhanced acumen turning around and, and paying more of the claims too. I mean, that was hopeful right now, but they are having struggles with COVID. Uh, they are they are with workforce as well. We we have like about a three to a five month lag when it comes to some of this stuff because they've been running into uh, shortages on their workforce. They don't even work from the office anymore. I uh, but we did we did reduce the amount of money that they charge us uh, to process the claims. Right, and then you actually found a lot of claims that were never processed when you, when you got here. Yeah. And that picked up and not several years back, but we did increase our receipts from Acumed. And that is still an ongoing thing that I right, try. I understand. Yeah. We're trying between Acumed and myself is trying to make sure we are getting the we're billing them out for the correct amount. I I every month I do a uh, I do an audit of all the calls, all the calls that I that I go with. And then I look at what the charges are when we get the charges in to see does that match up to what what I feel that matches up to. Mm -hmm. And we've caught a couple of problems that where their coder is looking at it one way, I'm looking at it a different way. And then there's there's a component where I became educated just as much. And so it's a it's a two way street uh, that I'm not saying that I have the answer and they don't have the answer and vice versa. And, and we're working quite well to kind of get where we need to be at when it comes to that. How many small towns around here, like Lighters Ford and Monterey, or do we service from here? We we service Monterey. It is our only contract. Now, uh, this year, um, I reached out with the commissioners of Blackback County and submitted them a proposal to increase the contract for that. Um, now, I don't want to give the number out in this meeting here. If you'd like it at another time, I could give it to you. Yeah. But they haven't. Uh, they have. They wanted it for their budget hearing, um, and for their budget process, I haven't heard anything negative or bad. But it's a significant increase from from years past. When do you expect to hear? Uh, I expect to hear later this month. Here. Okay. And uh, right. once I once I get that, I will forward it all to you, and, and then uh, I will get with uh, the, the town attorney to draft up a new MOU, MOU right. uh, so it could be signed and, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm quite confident uh, with that, with the new contract, that it's going to it's gonna help us supplement mm -hmm. it more, um, because they, in my view, they were severely underpaying the, the service that they were providing. Um, unfortunately for them, it's a a depressed area to say the least and so there again their payer yeah. mix is even worse and so the calls that we do run out there you know they aren't you know high return calls and you know I, people will sit there and say all the time well how can you put a price on saving someone's life it is it's it's not necessarily we're trying to put a price on saving someone's life we're just trying to provide the best service that we possibly can um, with what we have and the the differences are in some of our surrounding areas is that some of the surrounding counties you know automatically think just because we're two or three miles away and someone's having a medical emergency in their county that oh well there's there's cover ambulance that, that's right here and they can just come over there and it's not saying that we don't want to help and we don't want to help our neighbor and we're there to help them in, in needs of major disasters or major issues they're you know they, they've exhausted all their ambulances and we need to come but there are boundaries for a reason and the the residents are are truly what's driving the service here 
and we can't be the stopgap for everyone else's community around us to not have the services they need. Now, Marshall County is different. We do provide, you know, without a problem within the surrounding communities in Marshall County. Um, but we have Fulton County that has tried to, to pull us down because they don't have, they, they didn't have staffing, so they dropped a truck. And so uh, we've been having some ongoing uh, talks on that because, you know, it's, it's I want to be there, but we can't be there for everything. And Jeff, so, Jeff, you mentioned you mentioned the cost per call is about nine hundred dollars. If I take next year's projected budget of eight hundred and seven thousand, and you said we had about five hundred calls, that comes out to about sixteen hundred dollars a call, not not nine hundred. Am I missing yeah. something there, or there's something that's not included or should not be included in the cost per call? Would have to look at that again, Rich, to kind of I'd have a better understanding of that towards the end of the year based upon the calls. Um, okay. That uh, that's a number that's very flexible, or very, uh, very not definitive until we have more definitive numbers by the end of the year, what we brought in for revenue. Uh, but it's more as a uh, as an indicator that, you know, uh, if, if we would only run 200 calls for the year, that that number would be even greatly higher. Um, and so, but you have the service, uh, whether you have one call or a thousand calls. It's kind of like your fixed cost. Yeah, it's your no, fixed I, cost. Right. And I, I understand that. I understand you have no control over the number of calls. Um, I appreciate your, your work on with Acumed and on um, updating charting and things like that. Um, you know, we've got ninety thousand dollars in receivables, you know, projected um, you know, fee collection of eighty thousand dollars for next year. That's you know, that's like ten percent of our cost. Um, our costs, our overall costs since um 2021 to what's projected for next year is an increase of 280 uh, percent and i again i understand what you went through with the this, this salary stuff but again from 2019 to, to um 2023 we're talking about a hundred percent increase in salary cost and i'm just um i'm i just i, I think the service is great um I'm not sure how long we can afford to do this. I, I just, I mean, I don't know what to do. I just, um, it, um, you know, and I don't see, I don't see that, and it's not your fault, but I don't see that cost getting controllable. And I don't see that, you know, I don't see the fees going up to offset that, so. No, you're exactly right, Rich. I mean, that is a, that is a worry, a concern. I actually talked to Marlene about this, uh, this, this week alone. And we talked about that in the, the one of the listening sessions that you were at. Um, there are many factors that we need to look at collaboratively um, amongst ourselves, amongst our local officials, amongst our regional uh, officials with the state. We need to find more tax dollars coming from other entities um, that in government uh, because these, these services are just rapidly increasing and they're not getting better. Um, I, I only see it getting worse. And as I, you know, I sympathize with it all, and I know you understand, it's, you know, I, I, I'm trying to keep this as bare as I can, but there isn't really much fat on the bones here to, to absorb much. Um, and like I said, if we had 800 plus runs a year of billable runs, we wouldn't be worried about anything because we would be getting, you know, a large sum of money, but we're just, we just don't. Um, and it's getting, it's getting hard. We yeah. did have a when we went before the commissioners about the emergency services issues, um, cost came up um, because, of course, that was also the sheriff's pushback was, you know, we need more money, more resources. And for the first time in a, several years, um, one of the commissioners brought up the low it. And we're one of the only counties that doesn't have a, the low it tax, which would have to be that money has to be used for emergency services and it gets disseminated back into the community so you know it's not like the county gets to keep it and disseminate it so much it's all based on population i'm sure but they're actually at least considering that and i think we need an organized effort toward encouraging it if that's one of the answers to this and i think right now it's um kind of difficult jeff and i have discussed it frequently is our frustration that 
there's no one at the county level taking a lead on these things and and organizing a collaborative effort. So it may be that we need to be that lead um, to encourage other communities to get engaged in this as well, because they have the same struggles we do. Look at Argus. What what is the order of magnitude? This I mean this this much this much. It would be significant for all the communities. I, I can put it to you this way, Bill. Um, Four County uh, did the, the, the lid tax and they passed it this year. It's half a percent on gross wages. So roughly the state, the county of Laporte has roughly about thirty two and a half million dollars in tax caps, mm -hmm. uh, circuit breakers that they they cannot they cannot uh, have. And so think of what all the communities could do with thirty two million dollars. So with the county of Laporte, just the county's portion alone is going to be six and a half million dollars. Um, with raising that half a percent. Um, that still puts them underneath uh, the threshold of counties in the state that have even additional uh, local income option taxes. Um, and because there are several different ones, this is a public safety lit, so it can only go to police, fire, EMS, and correctional institutions. The only one our county has ever done was the, the one for the jail. I think they called that an eat it, maybe Is it eat it or I can't remember what they called it, but there's like seven different taxing tools right. the state allows you to use. Jenny, does, isn't using. I'm sorry, Jenny, does the, the Crossroads healthcare team have any, uh, I mean, if they took a position on this, would that be helpful? I mean, I know that they, they're the receptive audience is, is I don't want to say it's more interested in roads than you know than healthcare, perhaps. But uh, um. uh, you already have had two county council members speak out against a low or any other form of taxing tool. I think your commissioners are probably on board, although I I don't know that all three of them are. But I don't know. I don't think it'll matter to some of them. They've made up their mind long before we even have a conversation with them. But some of them may be willing to do it if they understand the struggle and the challenges that this is not just Culver, it's every community is. Well, and that's why I was wondering if the isn't there a healthcare crossroads team um, at yeah. the county level? Um, yeah, they don't really get involved in public safety and public. I, I guess. From a blue zone standpoint, they would be interested in what the EMS is going through, but they're more um, worked up over the fact that all these health services are exiting the county. Um, I don't even know that they they realize what's going on in the EMS departments. Okay, uh, sorry, Karen. Workforce issues, but sorry, Karen, I didn't mean to take us off on that tangent. Do you have anything else? Um, one thing I didn't say is if we do approve that additional uh, hire, uh, we do qualify through Indiana Workforce Development a five thousand dollar grant. Uh, I was going to try. I was when I was turned on to it late this year um, by the State EMS Commission, and so we would do that. I plan on applying for that when the opens up at the beginning of the year um, for the for the new hire to help offset the cost. Uh, but that would be so that's it thank you i have a question on the uh, billing what you bill does that does that bill go directly to the person's insurance company or does that go like do you get their insurance company yeah uh, i get their i get their insurance information if i can get that so, but also the bills go to uh acumen with with medicare and medicaid and the way with most of their going now is you hardly ever see the bill unless you actually owe something. Um, you look at your uh, Medicare like, statement, your your Part B, um, and you should see your benefits on there and what was paid. But nine times out of ten, you really never see the bill um, unless you actually owe something outstanding um, from them. On my end, I I have to go in and look at. Um, or even request at times to see where their accounts at, what was paid, what wasn't paid, right. and, and where is it at. 
I can't, I, I don't have access to look at their system and say, hey, on this call, where's where's it at in the whole chain? And uh, And I wanted to go go into the the changes that are proposed with with Center for Medi uh, Medicare Services that they're looking at as well. So <laughs> they're not very great either. And we got to do a ton of work for them. Yeah, and this is our year for uh, Medicare audit. So there's uh, there's a good deal of paperwork that has to be submitted to them. And so it's it's I did the Medicaid one earlier this year. That was real simple. Um, the Medicare one is a little bit more involved, and if uh, it's not done properly, we could see a, a possible 10% reduction in our uh, returns. That we can. So, mm -hmm. Stay need some chocolate while you're working on that one. <laughs> it, it's really it's not that bad. You know, now with Karen, with the way she pushes everything out, everything you know being computerized, it's it's not that bad. Box the Rice Krispie Treats. That, that <laughs> keeps on going. And quit telling the people that I, I never shared with them. You know, so that doesn't help me either. So but I did know they dropped off some corn. So. <laughs> thank you, sir. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks.
Thank you, Karen. I'm not sure about the previous. But. I think Karen's on giving you a copy of Kaya kind of where I was shooting at, mm -hmm. I believe. The only change that I really see in there is something that we're trying to, that Karen and I have talked about, and Penny and I have talked about trying to get some kind of one to put away for the guy to give me one more perk to try to get. To come in. Kind of as a line item, and I threw a number in there. And instead of giving everybody raises or little money, I put in for minimal raises, but to give that a benefit if they want to put in money so that the town somehow, we haven't figured out how to get it as a matching. That's the EMS assist line. Yeah, that should be something figured, else. Figured <laughs> I just realized that. <laughs> Right. That's basically a fire the assist. Yeah. Yeah. There's this there's life. There's that going up in our world and normal fuel. Haven't we didn't, you know, we were going to try to do our radios for this year and pushing it off and pushing it off because we don't have two new radios at the first of the year. Because is that last year? They raised, they raised it for, yeah. They put it out of the CCD fund. It's been, I've been pushing it off because the radios we have, we have had minimal breakage. I don't want to see us spending $5,000 a radio, I'm buying 15 radios, yeah. why am I spending all the money if I can get another year out of mine? I want to get them geared up. So last year, though, we did approve a sp like purchasing out of the CCD fund up to $32,000 worth of radios. Right. right. And, and you're saying you're holding off on that? I'm trying to. I'd like to. Like to hold on it as possible. I know that we... In the worst case scenario, things are going bad. I know we had one one that we went out on us, but it was we had a, we had another radio that we could fill back into that hole. So uh, right now, not on war saying that we won't that off until next year. Uh, because with my budget, I know there's only I don't even think there's any ten thousand dollars in there. Right, there wasn't last year either, but we you well, do have it in the CCD budget, which is a separate account where Karen was going to take that out of. Yeah, so you did. could buy them this year. But I think if it's got to be that way, that's the way it is. But if it could go on without causing issues. So you want to put off the purchase for another year? I'd like to because I think that we're going to make it through this year. It's already August, September. The rate that we're going right now, I think we can make another year without doing it. Hopefully, in that time, the world calms down a little bit. Things aren't further. So, is that the purpose? Um, is that the purpose of waiting to see if yes. prices go down, the supply right. chain catches up, all of that sort of stuff? Yeah. I do know too that I'm on the 911 dispatch uh, board. And I know at the last meeting that we had, John Gorlick was there, and he was talking about he's met with all of the different fire firemen uh, at your fire meeting. And one of the big issues was radios and the fact that not only are our radios bad, but we're on different frequencies sometimes. And uh, he was going to, to talk to the commissioners and the council and see if he couldn't get some kind of a line item in the county budget for radios for all of the um, different uh, well, towns or different communities. Well, so whether we could get them all at once, I don't know, but I know that John Gorlick is working on it through the county budget. Mm -hmm. So that might be a way that we can get We have talked about it. I know radios. that Burb, uh, Bourbon has got new radios, all new radios. Raymond's got all new radios, and that's all within the last year. And all these radios that we bought were together as a grant back in Right, 15 years ago, I would say, you know, the end of the day. Terry, was that all? Are having the same issues. That's when all of them transitioned to the 800 megahertz? Yes. 
That was about fifty. That was my first year on council, which yeah. was fifteen that was years what ago. We're working off of right now, still yeah. for our for our radio. Everybody else is having the same issue as I am, but theirs are apparently they're giving up and going over more of the buying rate. I've been waiting to see because there's been two different brands of radios that we looked into and to see how they're going to fall because one of the brand radios is a lot cheaper than the radios that we have now. Got good and bad out of like talking to different departments, not even in our area that have got radios. And I'm kind of getting feeling out what's going on if they're buying the uh yeah, whatever the radio name is, I can't do Ken Woods was one of them, and that's a cheaper, that's a cheaper radio, they're about three grand compared to Motorola's, which are fifty five hundred dollars. But and then I, I kind of look at longevity too. We've got the radios that we got are Motorola's and they've lasted 15 years. Well, that's pretty good. Do I go? Do I go away from that? Step down. I don't know that I'm stepping down because some of the dummies have the exact same radio. I'm leaning the other way. I'm saying I don't think that they are, but some of the departments are going right. that way for their own budgets. And I'm trying to give them a year to get theirs in and find out if they're having trouble with that, that would definitely tell me I would not go that way for radios. So if you're going to hold off anyway, I can check in with John Grolick and see if anything, if he's had any traction with getting a county line item for it. If he did do that, it hasn't come back to me. I know we've talked about it. This has been in our, we have county meeting every month. We haven't had one for them, so it's something we start next month. And we every meeting that's been something that's been brought up at our county meetings, and that's where all the departments get together. Going on, what's going on in your world? And that's something that's definitely been a bell breaker. Every meeting, someone's like, Oh, what are we going to do? How do we, you know? He brought it up in our April meeting, and then the July meeting was canceled, so we haven't heard back from it, but we have a meeting this one. Okay, so uh, you know, he may, it may have found out something, but I'm sure whatever he finds out, it. He won't know definite whether the county's going to do it anyway because the county's just now doing their budget right. for next year. So, you know, even if you can get the county to talk about it and have them put it in their budget, it goes through their council and maybe it'll be cut. Maybe. So, but at least we know yeah. if he's approached them and if they mm -hmm. are receptive to the idea. Well, I mean, you just know that the money's there. You have to do it this year. Turn, we'll turn, so we'll budget it for next year, knowing that if you don't, then we're going to cut, or if you end up buying some out, we'll just cut that amount off of next year's budget. I think that's the smartest, I, in my mind, that's the smartest way for me to go. I mean, I don't see any any way I know where we're looking for the worst case scenario. Well, so far it's been okay, I haven't had yeah. issues as what I thought the other departments are having, they're having. So, anybody got any questions for Terry? The ten thousand dollars that you have in radio. So, is that is that for different equipment, or is that just like for two radios a year, or is that? Well, we raised that. We raised that up two years ago, I believe. Right. So that so that we could start budgeting money, saving money. So that we could have money to buy radios when it comes that time. So like at the end of the year, we don't have we have we haven't used that on regular. I don't know we haven't used very much of it. I think we bought some parts and pieces uh, to keep our own radios together. That's what that that's what that ten thousand dollars was for was to buy two radios. Basically, that's why we wanted to do it, and that's why it's in the line act like this. And if we don't use it, we've been talking about saving money, trying to save money for these big packages, uh, you know, later on down the road, when we buy a truck, how do we get ahead of the program by not taking out every year, by trying to build it so we're ahead instead of behind. Right. So, so that's what, on the 2022 budget that has been unexpended, that's the 9251, that's basically the balance of the 10,000 you set aside for radios for this year? Yes. Basically what just, I'm sorry, this is off topic, so I'm gonna shoot myself in the foot on that, but um, what I'm trying to get each of the department heads to do is to map out 
um, big expenses over the next five to 10 years. And then when we're done with the comp plan, we'll have all of that information as well as far as what projects we're gonna have in the foreseeable future. Then you, I think you guys already approved having Baker Tilly come in and do a financial plan. We put that off because we wanted to wait until the comp plan was done. Mm -hmm. So then take that, the comp plan information, the information from the department heads, get that all together and put together some sort of plan to say, okay, this is, you know, each year we want to set aside mm -hmm. X amount for this future purpose and get stuff a little more organized. And then maybe also, you know, that might say to us, okay, well, out of, you know, we're getting X amount money in property taxes in, we're going to set aside each year 5% of that or, you know, a certain amount just to get ahead of this. And then, you know, at some point, you know, none of us are going to be here, but we want to obviously, you know, one of the things I think we're all in agreement on is we want to leave this better than what we, what, what it right. was when we came in. And so to have this plan in place for, you know, whenever, mm -hmm. um, yeah, then, I applaud. I mean, I applaud that action, Karen. I mean, that's where I was going with the peer um, issue. Also, is to have some capital plan. I'm not sure what our accounting. And that's part mm -hmm. of part of all of this. So right, right. It's just gotten stopped because we wanted to get that comp plan right. in place first because we didn't want to get a plan, financial plan set, and then it like goes out the window because the comp plan has a different direction. Mm -hmm. And I right. give us. You know, what has to be supplemented with grant dollars versus you know, how do we come up with funding projects in general? Mm -hmm. Deferred maintenance and operations are not as easy to grant as, say, a brick right. and mortar quality of life project. So it could be that we find out that our own money has to go toward departments and people versus projects that are brick and mortar where we have to seek out the grant money. Right, but with we like with the ninety two hundred dollars that's left in Terry's budget from this year on radios, we're not going to encumber that and carry that forward. Which I think is sort of what I, he's thinking is that if he puts it in there ten thousand every year, when we get to fifty, then we're going to have enough to replace the radios. Or that money is just it's not it's not reserved anywhere. Right. It it basically goes back to the general fund. So hopefully it's right. building up. Um, right. Okay. I want to get where that money is maybe put into a different fund that where it's not as easily tapped mm -hmm. for that's what you get the overages so yeah. good yeah it's totally it's like it's, based on it was from the fire department budget from five years ago it's going to go towards the fire department somewhere along the line right right like right now it's all going into the general funds right. and it may or may not make it right. it's probably <laughs> increased costs so but yes that, that's my, my future goal. Whether it's attainable or not, I don't know. I guess that confuses me as to how that affects my budget. Then, if it's going back into the general fund, I, then I deduct it as income correct. not yes. or if, expenses not spent or money not spent. Correct. And I subtract. And that, I think that's what you already do. Right. Yeah. Okay. But then at the end of three or four years, whenever you have enough filled up in there and you want to buy, mm -hmm. um, and that and that's when you tell me I said I, I get an extra, yeah. an extra expense of 15 radios and I have to go to you. Okay. And we need to get this all in writing, like how we do things. Right. And we need to sit down right. and write this out. And the uniforms then, do you spend so much each year on uniforms? The 15000 that you have in uniforms? And we've only spent twenty five hundred dollars so far this year. Um, that was because we just bought new. We just spent one hundred and forty thousand dollars on uniforms last uniforms year. Uniforms and air packs. That was the extra that yeah I put in. So, yeah. so the fifteen thousand that we have in for uniforms this year, then we actually don't need that. Well. That uh, goes back to the that goes back to the drawing board of where if we don't keep budgeted items like that, ten years when we need one hundred and forty thousand dollars. So this is like the yeah, like radio. Really I mean, the savings like, yes. for right now for like, probably the next. It's got to be that for, way. for next not, year. Hopefully next year we'll get this financial plan. What's it cost? So we can get it down. 
get things settled out. We need to, think, you know, think, we need to get to so that we can yeah. yes. make a list of those different things that yeah. go into that. I think yeah. both ants is so I can kind of in my cube. It's going to be 600 in it, boots, 300 in gloves, 400 in yeah. a helmet. Yeah. 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 So probably $7,000 on an air pack. It's just a more than seven thousand in the practice. I've already paid. Yeah, you're looking at twelve. Twelve, yeah, that's what they like. Yeah, somewhere so, in that area. So if you added a person, I want to get it's going to cost us that much more. Just put that in here, right? We cover yeah. outfitting a new higher Exactly. <laughs> this year we ended up. It was we got a DNR grant that is going to help us pay for two sets of that year. Yeah. Give us a How's your manpower? We're sitting at 14. The daytime is pretty slow. Very slow. And then most of the new people that we put on, fortunately, most of them work out of town. The new people that are, haven't got training, which we've been trying to get the county to come up with some kind of class to teach them. They've shifted instead of having a fire one and fire two, which is a mandatory thing they have to have, into a shorter class that they're trying to get together just to get these guys to be able to go on the truck because we don't have an option as to how much training they have. The state's kind of telling us, here's how much training this guy's going to have before he gets on to the truck. Right. I can tell him to go if it's something that I'm sure that that guy can do through our just our training at the station, working with our trucks and our gear. You know, I could take out a couple of the new guys with me and I'm you know put a grass fire out. I'm going to give them more training. But when it comes to going inside a house fire or going into a car scene or extrication, if they're not in that, they're not in that. They that's definitely mandatory. So they're not putting on any fire one and two. We have one person that has been fire two right now that class started last year takes eight months they took up two and a half months for summer and he just started back and right now there's not another one i have three people that need to go into a class now i can take it tomorrow the closest one is like uh Purdue. and that's not acceptable to drive back and forth so we do any other classes I know in the fall they usually usually come up with classes and that's when people sign up because it's easier for uh, jobs to do the winter uh, winter time you know it's a little slower in life for everybody so hopefully this fall uh we believe typically right now is the class that we've got a guy driving over there two days a week taking the last month and a half of his class once he's done we'll have another one so but there's three more that are sitting there and I can't do that. I'm just going to mail out a new female that's on, trying to get on, get, you know, get her stuff done. One thing I haven't talked to Terry about yet, because we haven't connected on it, um, but I talked to Wayne and Karen about, um, we were thinking about ways to incentivize these three industries, EMS, police and fire because all of them have had downturns in workforce aside from the normal workforce issues in the state and one of the things I was thinking about is trying to get support for those industries in the state of Indiana not having to pay income tax like state income tax so Karen's going to float this idea by some people at AIM and see I mean yeah It'd be a year or two in the making, totally. obviously, to get a bill, someone to sponsor a bill. But the thought too is that let's say, like, we took Wayne's salary, and if you, if he were allowed to keep his state income tax because he's a police officer, or you were as a firefighter or an EMT, sure. that money could possibly be invested on their behalf. Like where they're allowed to do a pre-tax investment, like a Roth or a 401k. Sure. So kind of, you know, Terry made a good point that a lot of these volunteers, even though they have full-time jobs, a lot of them are self-employed. They're people just like Terry. Terry has thought about his future and saving for retirement, but some of the firefighters have not. And you've probably got that in similar other 
sure. volunteer fire services in the state. But I was thinking about his thought on somehow the town being able to do a match, like if they could keep their state income tax and we were doing that, they could actually put aside a decent amount of money. You know, or if they were allowed to invest the stipend they get. Yeah. And I don't know what kind of tax, if it affects fire as much as someone with a full time position. In Wayne's case, it would save him $2,500 a year to be able to keep that income tax. That's money in his pocket. Um, so we're, we're sort of kicking that around. And it, it, we're so busy right now, it's you know off the charts. But Karen's now on the AIM board and I, well, I floated connected. I sent an email to Karen, she, who's the legislative. So he responded back. He said he put it on something. He was putting it on, on the agenda. I'm not sure that we're not the only communities that to do on this. Yes. The more that gets out, people are going to load up. What can we do? It's what like happened? getting impossible to hire a police officer or an EMT. It's had, they've had mass exited from that industry since COVID. It's always been hard to get a volunteer firefighter, let alone a paid Someone one. that stays. Wants to train and mm -hmm. a lot of good guys are just a matter of where they need to be. It takes a long time, it's not just a long six week class, and you're going to take over a year. Mm -hmm. you tell somebody you got to be there for a year before you can do anything. It's, That's quite a, a commitment. Lot. The training is so much more, definitely, it's, 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 you know, so much more of a commitment than yeah, what it was just showing up at the fire station. You know. Right, doing whatever you need to do. Right now, it's you have to be trained. You go do something that you're not trained on. Hurt somebody. Um, bad news. Yeah. So it's your insurance company gets split up. You guys get lit up, and I like them up. It's, it's <laughs> not a good picture. If you get what I'm saying? If you're not trained. Don't do it. Get in the river, river rescue. If you've never been trained to do river rescue, don't do that. Go scuba diving if you never been a scuba diver. Been there to help somebody put yourself in jeopardy. But it's kind of hard sometimes, guys want to do stuff. They're there because they want to help. That's right. The, the That's right. They want to because they're not trained. It's not in there. I don't remember how many EMTs did Jeff say serves serve the entire state? Is it 5,000? 5,000 5, paramedics are about You know, 20. it yeah. probably wouldn't impact the state that much to allow those. Industries, police, fire, EMS right. to keep their state income tax. Well, you got a six billion dollar surplus, yeah. <laughs> That's right. You have to remember it's all, yeah, different you know, pots of money. Yeah. So, I mean, I think the income tax wouldn't affect, I mean, we would still do, we would lose on the back end, but not like if they're making $2,500 more, or I lose all $2,500, right. we'll lose like $500, you know, because it goes to multiple places. So mm -hmm. the impact wouldn't be as huge, but um, Campbell was going to put it on for discussion for the legislative committee, so. I wonder what, what even the county tax off of payroll is, percentage-wise, what is it? Is it more like a percent or two? Um, that would probably be side. easier to get done with the state level. Like it is. It's just, I'm trying to think of ways that we can get outside the box, either with county or state, because, you know, we only have so much revenue, we only have so much taxes coming in. Are there other ways to strengthen these industries if we don't? figure that out surely people I, I think we're assuming they're working on that you know what i mean like maybe we need to say hey how push, about this idea or that idea push the rope and give them something. yeah otherwise and they're not going to do anything they would shine they'd be heroes to make good on those three right. industries so the indiana state recording is 3.3 percent okay and then marshall county has a separate tax rate each county then has another tax rate for the county tax. Marshall County's 1.25, which okay. actually it's on the low. Yeah, that it's is on the low. low. Like Pulaski County is double that. Right. It's crazy. 
but they keep their property taxes low down there. Well, there's a trade off because they have, yeah. yeah. Because they have all the farm land. Well, there is. Is it the Eat It that is the one that's income tax based that Marshall County doesn't have, but other counties have? So, like people working even in Marshall County, if they live in some of these other counties, they they pay that part of the income tax that we don't have to pay. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not the wheel tax. I think it's the. It's an Eat It economic development income tax. And it you can do up to like a half a percent, I think. But even the people, then the people living here are working in another county are paying hours versus. Mm -hmm. But your county council didn't even consider that from what I was saying. You have a maximum levy that you can reach. Does the state put a maximum levy a percent on your overnight everything? Like like I'm on my budget, I can I can only raise my levy five percent. That's that's, right, that's, that's statewide. That's yeah, that's statewide. That's yeah. That's that's growth, right? For the when I, they changed the name. So yeah, this year it was five point five five percent. Five percent. Right. That's all we did. Raise my that's up by the state. See, then you start supplementing the growth, growth income yeah. tax. The lit, the lit. Right, right. And all the then you have to subtract your tax caps on, in my case, which the lake house. Yeah, yeah, which shouldn't be. You shouldn't have huge tax caps. Or do you? Mm -hmm. No, that it makes and a difference. They, yeah, I mean, but compared to a lot of others, no. like, because your your no, value is fairly rate. high. Right. And your tax rate is low, so you don't have right. that. Right. Yeah. And we, I think the town loses about, I think it was 28,000 because of tax caps, which, I mean, there's some places that it's, um, I assume my 28,000 is. Yeah. Um, it's minimal. Quite good. <laughs> you know, when you're looking for every dime you can get, right. <laughs> it yeah. makes a difference. Yeah. Does anybody else have any more questions for Terry? No. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you, sir. Yeah, you're welcome. Have a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Terry. Wake up now. And we've got tomorrow, we've got at least three yep. the extraneous groups and the clerk. And then at that point, we probably need to decide what. Now I've, I've got PYC coming at 4.30 or whatever. The That's last time is up There's there. some coming yeah. at 4. And I think with Visitor Center, developed Culver is going to come in. Just so well, you know. And it. Council on Aging is coming. It's fine. I figured give those people a set time and then I'll just I'll yeah. present my budget and work around them. Okay. I never heard back from Tree Commission on whether or not they're coming tomorrow, but I oh. let them know. Oh, I let Mike know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, to, I told uh, Brian four o'clock, so he'll be here for two. So are we scheduled for two to six? Two until six. Two, three, and probably, four. Yeah, two, three, and four. Two, so three, and four tomorrow. It'll probably go a little bit longer tomorrow. Okay. Um, yeah. Just because of those extra groups. Yeah. But then again, some may go pretty fast too. Mm -hmm. so. so when will you revisit these budgets and make any cuts that you're going to, or what? The That's the question. That was the question I was beginning to ask if we want to then after tomorrow night or scheduled meeting for next week to kind of discuss what you all are comfortable with or what changes need to be made. And um, most likely what I'm going to end up doing is just so I can get information into Gateway and get the budget notice out, I may take the numbers that we have here and just stick it in there for right now. Have, it has to be in the 27th. Okay, so we need to, but you can always, you can always back down on that. Like you can, 
You can reduce. You can put it in this, and yes. then I can decrease it. Correct. You, can, you but, can't add. You cannot add. Correct. Right. Can right. And that's but that's I kind of what I'm. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm getting at is we need to get this information into the gateway. gateway sooner, and I can put out the advertisement. It's just going to be high, and then we can we cut if if that's the council's choose. That's, the that's way everybody. That's choosing. the way we've normally done it, and that's so, what we should do. So, I mean, I just, but I want to also get another meeting on the calendar so we know kind of. I understand that. Um, so, I don't know if you want to meet before council on Tuesday. Um, I don't think that's no. the time. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. And, and that's where I'm. I'm then tell me what you what you want to do, and I will get the meeting scheduled. Or do you want to do like a work session on Tuesday? And that's, yeah. That's kind of what I think she's parents suggesting on work session Tuesday. Then yeah, I'm not meeting. I'm not saying approve this Tuesday. That was not my intent at all. So my intent is I need to get a public notice out. So right. I'm gonna put this, these numbers in here, advertise it to the public. It's fine because you can't you can't increase it. You can always decrease it. So we have time to decrease. That's that's where I'm at. I just need to know when you all would like to meet to work on deciding what you want to do. And how much time you need to gather through all the, you know, sift through all the information. And in addition to what she's saying is, and I, I too can can post these on the gateway. Yes. yes. What figures we have, but like last year, I thought once we posted on gateway, I had a set amount that what my budget was, and then when I got the figures later, we all had changed them. Okay. Yeah. I want to be a part of that change yes. this year. And so right. let's. It, while you're in the room, let's set one more meeting. And then. OK, how, you go from there? how much time do you guys need to get it on gateway? Oh, we've I, got our figures. We can do it tomorrow. I, yeah. OK, that the gateway sec, the gateway portion is completely separate from when do you get how long do you all need to sift through this information? Make some observations, decisions, whatever. When would you like to meet next? Next week, sometime, group. Well, council meeting I'm, is Tuesday, right? You're out Monday, Thursday, Tuesday. Friday. I'm out the 25th through the 30th, but it's you can meet without me, certainly. How long are we talking about? Probably, I'm going to guess maybe two hours. Wouldn't you think, Karen? I would probably set that aside because you'll have six. You know, I have a feeling. The budgets, the emergency service budgets are probably the ones that you spend the most time on. I would think so um, too. Because those will have the most significant increases and um, policy changes, and for lack of a better word. Um, so, um, you know, schedule two hours and maybe we'll go that long, maybe we won't be at all. Do you want to do it You're before out. the council meeting on Tuesday or? No, that's too. too I'm soon. getting that it's too soon. Okay. Yeah. You're out what now? 25th through the 30th. I mean, we could go to September 1st. I mean, is the 31st or the first too long to go out for you? No. I don't think it's all right. Yeah. It'd be better for me. So I would like to, you know, so I'd like to get a final determination on what the budget is going to be by the 13th of okay, September. Of September okay. that's, that's your first meeting in September. Then I'm actually gone at the 27th meeting, but then we have our public hearing on October 11th, and then we need to approve the budget on the 25th. Uh, October. October. So I, I usually have it earlier, but since I'm going to be gone the 27th, I didn't want to necessarily have the public hearing and not be here. Mine, mine's so. the 19th. Okay. Next Wednesday, so, yeah, we the, next Wednesday, the 31st, oh, or two Wednesdays from now, the 31st. You okay with that? I'm okay. But that we're, that's okay now, with me. The meeting. Meet yeah. yeah. Go over the budget. What? We want to set it at two o'clock in the afternoon, and that gives us two hours to four. And if we went another hour to five, yeah, that's still a good deal. That'd be good. Yeah, okay. I like starting during business hours for the department head's sake. Yeah. yeah. I know Terry, it's a little yeah, hard for him he to get come here, but the end. he likes to come at the end of the work day. 
All right, the 31st at 2 o'clock. And hopefully by that, you know, at the end of that, right. meeting, we've got we've got things pretty well settled. So. Um, that way, Marlene's ready for her meeting, her public hearing. Is that OK for you too, Marlene? Yep. Yeah, block out two hours and it could go to three. Two o'clock. Yes, yeah. ma'am. And we could probably address. Pardon me? We could address the orders first. And then You get that, Rich? Yep. Thank you, sir. Thank you. To be adjourned. Hope we'll see you by then. <laughs> I knew you'd be missing me, Bill. That's... Always. I, it must have been a time delayed response there. I think the try the <laughs> internet. It was probably the internet being slow. Okay. All right. That was a pregnant pause. All right. I'm gonna. Speaking to the elephant in the room. What? You, all right. Yeah.